What's up, folks? How we doing? Getting into this chapter four. We're starting a new section. All right. I'm rocking out a little bit this morning here. This band is called Bailiff. They're really good. Okay. Let's get it going here, folks. Okay. I could jam out all day like you know I can. So um, I've got the chapter four learning goals up here. So this is going to be um, a really important chapter. We're going to start seeing ourselves really get into the meat of chemistry now. Okay. So and here we go. Let's get this started. Yes. Okay. So what we have here is a picture of water dissolving salt, um, as you can see right there. Ooh, let's make my line a little bit thicker. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Water dissolving salt. And so I'm going to walk you through. There's a, a lot of uh, cartoon representations of our molecules on here. So here we have the H2O molecule, the water molecule. Okay. And as it turns out, this molecule has this bent geometry. Okay. We're going to learn this um, why it has this bent geometry as we progress. But for now, I'll just tell you that it's got this bent geometry. There's 105 degrees between um, those bond angles. Okay, or the bond angle is 105 degrees. So now you notice that I have this thing here, this two, and that's a lowercase delta with a negative sign. So this means partial charge. Okay, so we know water is a covalent molecule. It's not ionic. It is covalent, meaning it shares electrons between neighbors. However, as it turns out, not all atoms share equally. Okay, And oxygen just so happens to be a bully for electrons. So in this sharing, okay, so we know that the oxygen has... A partial negative charge that's roughly like let's call it two minus that's what that um, corresponds to it's not two minus we know oxygen atom by itself or an oxygen ion is two minus but all the same it's it's negative that's that's what we can conclude it's partially negative and we also notice that the charge on each hydrogen is partially positive um, this makes water a fantastic solvent Okay, because it has these partial charges, negative on one side and positive on the other side, it is really good at dissolving material. And some folks even go on to call water God's solvent, okay, because it can dissolve a lot of things. So what does it mean to dissolve something? Okay, well, here I have a nice chunk of some salt, um, some sodium chloride, NaCl. The sodium plus are represented by those gray circles, right? The cations. And the Cl minus are represented by these green um, circles, the anions. Okay. And as water starts to dissolve this, you notice what can happen. The partially positive side of the water molecule can orient itself near the anions. And the partially negative portion of water can orient itself near the cations, okay? And so as this chunk of salt starts to get dissolved, you know, imagine putting a chunk of salt in your cup of water, right? It's, uh, you wouldn't be able to see this happening. You'd have to shrink yourself down to the size of a molecule. But if you could, you would note that as it's getting put into this water, I'm going to put H2O liquid okay, on the side of the arrow, the ions become a part of the solution, okay? And those ions are surrounded by the water molecule. In the case of the anions, look, those positive hydrogens are like kind of shepherding the anion, and then those negative oxygens are kind of shepherd, uh, shepherding those cations into the solution. So now let's move forward and talk about a little bit of these definitions, okay? So in this situation, so where I've got NaCl 
solid, okay? A solid chunk of sodium chloride being dissolved. We can express now that the anions have been dissolved, the ions, I should just say, and we can express that they've been dissolved with this AQ, aqueous, okay? That AQ means aqueous. And that aqueous implies that these ions are in water. Specifically, they are in water. And furthermore, I want to comment that when we have an anion like this, Na plus, or excuse me, a cation, or an anion, these ions, okay? These ions don't really exist as charged species um, unless they are in a solution. Now, they can, they, that's certainly not the total truth, okay? We can have gas phase ions, that's called a plasma, when you have um, a gas that's predominantly made up of ions. However, that's pretty rare in the grand scheme of things, okay? So almost always in nature, when you have something charged, it is in an aqueous solution, okay? It is very difficult to have something um, charged, to have an ion, unless it is dissolved in water, okay? So I want you to start wrapping your head around that, that when I see a charge on an ion, there is a very likely strong probability that it is in an aqueous solution, okay? So now, in this situation here, we would call NaCl the solute. We would call the liquid water the solvent. It is dissolving the solute. And when this happens, when we use water to dissolve, sodium chloride, for example, it makes an electrolyte, okay? So sodium chloride is an electrolyte. So the Na plus and the Cl minus, it is a substance that when dissolved in water can produce a solution that will conduct electricity. I'm gonna try to rig up a demo of this for you. And if I can't rig up a demo, then I'm gonna, uh, I'll comment on some YouTube videos, okay? But this is um, for real. When you have a salty water solution, it can, in fact, conduct electricity. And what I hope to be able to show you in a demo, um, perhaps in my garage or something like this, that a salty water solution, a concentrated salty water solution, is actually a better conductor than like a copper wire itself, like a wire that you know you plug into the wall to conduct electricity to charge your cell phone. Um, uh, more often than not, these salty water solutions are better conductors than the wire itself. And I hope to be able to demonstrate that to you, okay? So solute, solvent, electrolyte, okay? Um, and so there was another definition that I don't have on here, okay, or two other definitions rather, that we'll get to in time, and that's precipitate and supernatant, okay? And I'll, I'll come back to this again, but just very briefly, okay, suppose we now have a solution, right, where not everything dissolves. So you notice in this picture here, we have here the sodium chloride solute, but now it's completely dissolved, okay? And so if it's completely dissolved, we would describe that as uh, homogeneous, okay? So it's one consistent phase. We don't see any solid chunks in there. But suppose we had a solution now where not everything dissolved, right? So let's say not everything dissolves. Okay? That can happen from time to time. We can have solutions in which our solute will completely dissolve and it makes a homogeneous solution. Or when we have this situation here where not everything dissolves, and we're going to talk about why that is in future lectures, okay? Then we would call it heterogeneous. 
Uh, I can't spell today. Heterogeneous. Okay. And now, when we have a heterogeneous mixture, okay, so we can have a homogeneous solution, but we have, but this heterogeneous has to be a mixture, okay? Because in this heterogeneous mixture, it, not everything is dissolved. It hasn't made a proper solution, okay? And then now continuing along with this, in our heterogeneous mixture, the chunks, so the solids, we call the precipitate. The precipitate, okay? And the liquid above the precipitate we call the supernatant, okay? So that's only in the case of a heterogeneous mixture. So right now I have some coffee. Mmm, coffee's good. I make my coffee uh, with a press pot, grad student strength, as strong as I can get it. There are definitely some chunks of coffee grounds at the bottom of my coffee cup. I know that sounds gross, I don't care, I don't swallow them, it's easy. And my press pot doesn't always get them all, okay? In this example, and I would show it to you, but it's not in a clear cup, right? There it is, the black stuff, okay? The coffee grounds are the precipitate, and the rest of the liquid in my coffee is the supernatant, okay? But now, in my cup of water right here, undoubtedly, there's some dissolved ions in here, right? I have a water filter on my... Um, sink, but it's not going to filter out every last single ion. There are undoubtedly some ions in here, probably some sodium, probably some chloride, um, and some other minerals that just so happen to be good for my body. This is homogeneous, okay? Let's see, I don't know, you probably can't see it. It's completely dissolved. When I look at it, it just looks like pure water, but it's not pure water. It's got some stuff in there, okay? So understand the difference between homogeneous solution and heterogeneous mixture. And then within a heterogeneous mixture, understand that the solids are the precipitate and the liquid in our heterogeneous mixture is the supernatant. And our homogeneous solution, the only thing we have is the solvent and the solute, okay? The solute would be the dissolved ions, the ions that become dissolved, and the solvent is the liquid that did the dissolving, all right? Moving forward. Oh, and then here's a, you know, again, just another cartoon representation showing you how um, the, you know, the positive side of these water molecules will surround um, the anion and the negative side of the water molecules, the oxygen, will surround the cation. That's how it's able to make this homogeneous solution, okay? Um, and the reason why it can conduct electricity, which again, I hope to demonstrate for you soon. It can conduct electricity because now the charges have been separated and they're no longer neutralized, okay? So in this picture, it, when it's a solid, a solid uh, salt crystal cannot conduct electricity because all of these charges, positive, negative, positive, negative, they're all neutralizing each other. They're all balancing each other. But now once this thing is in solution, those charges have all been separated, okay? And because those charges have been separated, you can actually pass a current of electricity through them. It's very cool, okay?